Is President Lee Saunders of the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees, also known as AFSCME, uh, part of the AFL-CAO. AFSCME, AFSCME.org is the website. You can uh, tweet uh, President Saunders at AFSCME, AFSCME. And uh, President Saunders, welcome back to the program. It's been a while. It has been a while. Good uh, talking to you, Tom. It's great having you with us. Uh, we're approaching the 50th anniversary of the 1968 sanitation workers' strike and the assassination of Martin Luther King in Memphis. Uh, tell us what uh, asked me and what you all are doing around this and the whole, this, this I Am 2018 campaign. In fact, let's go back a little bit. What was the I Am campaign then? Well, it's, uh, let me just say that uh, we have an old saying, and you've probably heard it, that uh, in order for you to understand where you've got to go, you've got to understand where you've come from. Uh, and 50 years ago, uh, 1,300 brave African-American sanitation workers uh, took on the establishment in the city of Memphis, Tennessee, uh, because they weren't being treated as men. Uh, they were not being recognized for the work that they did, not given the respect and dignity that was due. Uh, and the city did not want to recognize their union, Local 1733 of AFSCME. Well, hadn't they also just had two colleagues, two uh, sanitation workers, crushed to death? That's exactly right. As a matter of fact, that anniversary was yesterday, February 1st, 1968. Two sanitation workers were crushed in the back of the truck because they got out of the inclement weather. The city refused to provide uh, rain gear or anything like that. It was very cold, windy, and rainy. They got into the back of a truck, and the truck had faulty equipment. Uh, the equipment uh, uh, crushed those two sanitation workers. That really started uh, the strike. The sanitation workers said enough was enough. Uh, we had a moment of silence in more than 70 cities across the country yesterday just honoring those two sanitation workers uh, giving their lives uh, for providing pu public service. And we want to continue that momentum uh, with our program that we call I Am 2018. So the I Am movement at that time and its relationship to the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. Tell us about that. Well, Dr. King understood uh, the connection between labor rights and human rights and civil rights and economic rights. And he watched very closely what was happening in Memphis when those sanitation workers went on strike. And they carried those placards that simply read, I am a man. And he decided that he would travel to Memphis because he believed that he needed to be involved in their struggle, in their fight. And he made that connection between those rights that I just mentioned to you. Uh, and he ultimately gave his life. Uh, gave his life after uh, delivering the mountaintop speech at uh, the Mason Temple. Uh, the next day he was assassinated. Uh, so we've got to honor that moment, honor 50 years, uh, what uh, commemorate 50 years. Uh, but we've also got to rededicate ourselves and recommit ourselves. And this just can't be a one-day commemoration, but it's got to be a call to action, a call to action where we organize and mobilize and educate our community. So we're working very, very closely with the Church of God in Christ. Uh, their headquarters are at the Mason Temple. Uh, they were actively involved in the strike in 1968. In Memphis. So we are working closely with them to, uh, to do just that. We want to bring this to light, commemorate, but also establish a plan and a strategy for the future where we can educate and mobilize our communities across the country. So this is, uh, how would you characterize the modern I Am movement? What, the, 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 what speci are there specific goals that you're trying to achieve? Is there, are there you know, my, milestones that you could say, okay, when we've done this, we've gotten this far, th th that sort of thing? I, I think we've got to remind folks that there could be no economic justice without racial justice. And mm. the way that you get economic justice is through a strong labor movement, through our communities uh, coming together. Uh, I think we're going to work, and I know that we're going to work with stakeholders of all kinds through the I Am 2018 program. Uh, we're working closely with the ent entertainment industry, good corporate actors, the faith leaders, the community groups, and more to help ensure that the power of Dr. King's message endures, because we've come a long way since 1968. But, Tom, you know this. We've got a long way to go, and we've got folks that actually want to take us back and we can't let that happen. So that's what I am is going to be about. And we're going to be doing that through honoring what happened 50 years ago, but really educating our community so we can be prepared uh, for not only working through April of this year, but working towards the elections of November 2018 and continuing to educate and mobilize our communities after November 2018. This has got to be a movement. 
We're talking with Lee Saunders, the president of the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees, AFSCME. And the AFSCME.org, of course, is the website. President Sanders, what is the state of labor today, and what are the particular or unique challenges the labor movement is facing uh, or are facing as a consequence of the Republican takeover of the House, Senate, and White House and Supreme we're, Court? We are under attack like never before. I mean, we've got a big bullseye on our backs. I mean, if you look at uh, what's going on <coughs> excuse me, with the present administration, they're rolling back labor rights. Uh, we in the public sector, and uh, we have 1.6 million public service uh, members within AFSCME, are faced with a specific challenge along with our other public sector unions uh, across the country where the Supreme Court is going to be hearing a case uh, in February, on February uh, 26, which will really determine whether we will continue to have a seat at the table and to be able to bargain collectively. That case is Janus versus AFSCME Council 31. And if, in fact, the Supreme Court rules uh, to take away our rights and take away our freedoms, then this country will be a right-to-work country in the public sector. Uh, and we all know this. I mean, we know that labor, the labor movement has been instrumental in improving wages and benefits and working conditions and improving the lives of workers even outside of the union movement. Uh, but our, our, we are under attack right now, and they're trying to weaken us. And it's a, it's a power play. It's a power play, pure and simple, by those who have a lot of wealth and have a lot of power, and they want more, th and more wealth and power at the expense of those who are trying to play by the rules every single day. So we're fighting, and we're making our voices heard, and that's why this movement, I Am 2018, is so important, because we're getting back to basics, and yeah. we're reconnecting, and we're rebuilding. The, the existing unions in states that have, uh, there's been a few in just in the last couple of years that have flipped to right, right, right to work for less. Um, how, how, how are you all holding up? And, and is this state by state, uh, you know, uh, Wisconsin, I guess, was the last state to really uh, well, go Well, right now you've actually got 28 states yeah. uh, that are right to work, and they've done that on a state by state basis. What... <clears throat> will happen if the Supreme Court rules the wrong way is that overnight, the next day, the entire country for the public sector workers will become right to work for less. Right. The other 24 states just immediately get flipped. When is that case going to – have you had arguments yet? The case will be heard February 26th, and the decision will be rendered more than likely – and we, don't, we can't uh, project a specific day – but more than likely sometime in June. Wow. Wow, that, that, that is a very, very consequential case, and, and uh, there's not much you can do to lobby the Supreme Court, is there? Well, uh, that, that is hard, but uh, uh, we, are, we just got completed submitting uh, the briefs, mm -hmm. uh, supporting the position that we have and supporting the rule of law, which has been in place uh, for more than 40 years. Um, we are going to um, go back to basics, Tom, and as I said, we're going to uh, and we have been doing this. We're talking to our members one-on-one. -on -one. We're knocking on doors. We're listening to what they've got to say. We're re-engaging our members in our movement, in their movement. Yeah. And we're also bringing together our coalition partners like never before because we know that this is going to be a fight. This is going to be a battle. We can't do it alone. We need the support of all of our friends who understand the importance of labor in this country, who understand that, in, if, in fact, if we come together, uh, like never before, we can continue to move this country forward. Amen. President Lee Saunders of, the, of ASME, the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees. Uh, President Sanders, thanks so much for being with us today. Thanks for having me, Tom. It's always great talking with you. You're doing such great work there. You're doing God's work. Thank you.